Anyway, my original cold open was, uh, what's your, like, guilty pleasure self-care? Like, not oh, something generic. Okay. Like, okay. not something generic, like, you know, oh, I like to take a bath, blah, 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 blah. But what's something that's a little bit more, like... Horrible, horrendous, let me tell maybe. you. <laughs> not horrible, horrendous, maybe less, uh, you know, less PC. Because I'll start with mine. Yeah, mm. can you start? Okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not sure Okay, what so... You mean. My like or like just offbeat sort of. Sure. I hate that. Not like I'm like other girls sort of thing, but <laughs> I'm not like what other girls. I like to do to de stress. Just like every once in a while, I'll get really high and really drunk and just dance by myself down here. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. So like not because I was thinking like waxing, spending a, a, shaving. Like, yeah, that's like self care. Like that's like, like hygiene, self care sort of things. Like okay, you know, so like you're routine. You got to. Too. Yeah. What's your mental self-care routine? There we go. There's a better way of putting it. Oh, and I feel really bad. Uh, it, it's either throwing shit, which I typically don't like to do because I own most of the things that I have. Is that like a lash out or do you like just feel like, ooh, I got to throw something and you just We should do some throw axe stuff? throwing. Would you want to do that? that? Would axe be really I want to do great. a rec room. Actually, yeah, I that's what I want to do, do a is a rec room. room. Um, so throwing things, I know this is so violent, like compared to what I normally well, am I just, on the regular, I, like, said uh, axe throwing. Cause I was like, we're throwing axes. I, just I don't trust myself of... with like throwing an axe at You'd like be a like, target. Huh, and then it would go backwards. <laughs> I'm exactly. afraid that it's going to bounce back and like hit me. Like I've seen on a TikTok or something before, but, uh, throwing things, which is very terrible, uh, or, uh, spending, spending a lot of money. I don't know why. Yeah, like it makes me feel better to do retail therapy. I like to spend. I like to charge my card. Damn it! I do too. Right? <laughs> and it makes me feel so better. I'm like, ah. I also do that. I drunkenly buy things online. I, do too. I don't drunkenly I do, do it. I go into the store oh, and I'm no, like, I'd... this and this and this and that, and it's actually typically over a hundred dollars. You know how many shirts I've bought while we've been at Phoenix, and I'm like, I'm just gonna order it because I want it. Right? No, 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 no. That's all my horror shirts. Aside from like, you know, just being drunk at the bar and be like, blah da da Okay, I'm going to buy something. And then it snowballs into like, you know, a few things in the cart. Um, we go to lunch sometimes and I'm like, hmm, I've had a couple drinks. Do you want to go shopping? Oh, and yeah. we'll go to like fucking <laughs> Ikea yeah. or Target or something. And I'll just, I don't even know. I just start, you know, just do, do, do. Just charge it. You know. Just swipe it and yeah. see if it works. Yeah. And it's so much easier when you just tap. All done. <laughs> I swear to God, when all of my cards eventually turn into the turn into the tap feature, it's over. It's over. Because then it's like, do you really want to charge this to your debit card? And then I put my PIN number in. And I'm like, what have I done? But no. when it's tapping, you're like, yeah, <laughs> go, <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> Oop. Anyway, adulting. What wonderful, wonderful coping mechanisms we. Have. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yours is good though. It, it's I active, like yours. And then you get tired and you're like, time to sleep. <laughs> time to sleep. <laughs> Gotta go out here. Gotta go by. I like listening <laughs> to good uh, playlist and dancing around. Lip oh, yeah. syncing, if like, you will. Yeah. Oh, Are you ready to lip sync for my life? I'm ready. So like, I'll like put on some like random like dance playlist or whatever. And then I'll turn on some visualizer on YouTube on the TV. Cute. Right? And then I'll just mute the visualizer because sometimes there's music involved or something or another. And th that's when I'm just dancing. And, it's like, fun. It's, it's and I have my headphones <laughs> in. Oh, I took out my headphones actually last night. And I was like, oh, this is probably this seems really weird for your dogs. <laughs> I'm just jumping around. Oh, they're, they're used like, to what it the from fuck? me. <laughs> they're but like, these they, fuckers they, are weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, right, right, like, right. Oh, it'll probably be so weird just to see someone dancing in silence because there's no music playing. That's out a here. silent disco. Exactly. It's basically having like, a solo silent disco. It's like you being solo the main character of your soiree. movie. Mm -hmm. This is your montage scene. Main character energy. <laughs> when oh. you said that, I was just like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Have you listened to it, though? The, I am referencing the Beyonce acapella version, just so you guys know. That has, like, main uh, character break, energy. Break my soul. Oh, break my soul. We'll have to listen so to sorry. this after Oh, my God. It's so... Good. I mean, I, it, it, it Kessel's not here to be like, oh my god, Beyonce. Like, but it is morning. But I'm excited for the album. I looked at the track list and oh, I was yeah. like, I'm very intrigued by some of these song titles. First of all, Renaissance means like a new beginning. I can't wait. I'm like, if this is your era of club songs, I am here for it. Rebirth! Hey y'all, welcome to Sit Down Loser. We're watching a movie. My name is Dahlia. I'm Sky. I'm Antonio. And I'm Tonzo. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and we're we're <laughs> wait 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 me and all my personalities me and them <laughs> And we're just three virgins that can't drive, who watch movies that everyone else has watched. Except one of us is a loser who hasn't. Today we're watching a movie that shows us Paul Rudd truly does not age. Clueless, released in 1995, directed by Amy Heckerling. And today's loser is... Both of me! <laughs> <laughs> all of your personalities! Ah! No, not all of them. Just the two that I referenced. <laughs> just the two. Alright. But, uh, so... Uh, what you guys? Ketzel's not here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Clearly, the video uh, is just uh, the, the three of us. We Actually, left space for the Holy Ghost. We do have a fourth person here. Uh, eh. That's you want to wave? Hi, Frank. <laughs> Frank's in the background. He's just here for moral support. Say hi, Frank, from all the way over there. Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. So why did we pick this? <laughs> Oh, we're just <laughs> Ketzel's not here. That's it. Ketzel's Bye. not here. Ketzel's not here. And we're, we're so it's just, a cueless episode. It's a cueless episode, and it just really was so disgustingly fitting how this was on our list. And it's a cueless episode, and it's clueless. I'm sad. I I don't know. We've had an episode where it wasn't all of us before, has it? We've where had, it wasn't. We've we had, had multiple, with, <laughs> but with like, but with Ke- without Ketzel. No, this is our first without Ketzel. No, this is the first. Are you That's acting you. right now? No, I'm <laughs> sad because I just realized that. I'm like, it's been all of us at one point, but yeah, because it was Ketzel. It was me, and then it was you, and then it was you, and now it's Ketzel. I hate these Rip episodes. to Ketzel. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> really? I kind of liked the American Psycho one. <laughs> that one was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, not because I missed you, but I thought <laughs> so it was pretty funny. you got that on camera. <laughs> You're like, I actually really liked it. And Dolly was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I liked the Die Hard one. I thought it was funny. Oh, I did like the Die Hard one too. I did like Die Hard, but I missed you. I think well, that's yeah, how we it always, always is. It's like I liked it, but then I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Moulin Rouge kind of rolled really well without me. I would have just. Uh, yeah, you would have been a fucking bitch you about sure everything. You would have. I would have just. Me, 100% me, just me, like, Dahlia, oh, my and Gatorade. Ketzel it's cried filled. for like 20 minutes after the movie ended. Anyway, clueless. <laughs> anyway, clueless. <laughs> Anyways, okay. clueless. Why'd y'all prick this one? Let's prick. remember. Why do we prick Ketzel, this one? Ketzel's not here, which is sad. But Ketzel allowed us to do, do this. You want uh, lemonade or no? You no. don't like lemonade? I do. It's all I right. Just, it's just Champagne. slowing down my consumption. Oh. And uh, and yeah, Ketzel's not here, which is very sad. But we will get on without Ketzel, who will hopefully give us a even better uh summary or <laughs> what they thought about the movie <laughs> than I did <laughs> on Instagram. Um, but yeah. Why? Why else did we pick this? Uh, it's considered one of the best teen films of all time, and it has a huge cult following. Like, Absolutely, I mean, I've seen countless like um, adaptations. No, like uh, like t-shirt companies selling like clueless, you know, Merch. shirts. Um, I know the, a couple the makeup, yellow plaid. I know a couple makeup companies did like clueless inspired uh, Iggy collections Azalea too. Fancy that Fancy. music video is based on it, so it's like pretty huge as far as like teen movies oh. alicia silverstone who is the lead in this movie iconic of the 90s for sure she mm-hmm. was it girl she was like also i think in lenny kravitz's movie or no not movie music video aerosmith for, yeah maybe i think it was aerosmith it's like american woman oh was she in that too yes mm. I know. I'm pretty wow, sure she was the name is her familiar, kind of but off. her work. You knew me. something, and I knew is something. It, <laughs> is it very like heteroformative, or what do you mean? This music video? I don't know. As a per- as like Alicia Silverstone, I've never really. Like, oh seen yeah, anything. I mean, she's very. She was in Scooby Doo. She was in Scooby Doo as a reporter. Two? Oh no, she was in the first one. Yep. Huh. Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, very. Honestly, I can't think of anything else I've seen her in except for like. This. <laughs> Like this was her heyday. This was her heyday for sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's a very big cult following. A lot of things have happened yeah. with Clueless, very amazing. And number B, it's super quotable. It's super quotable. Like, can you just can you not? Uh, as if it's like you're just a virgin who can't drive. Do you do you not even know that line? Damn, dude! Incredible, amazing. I, I feel so sorry. I've been coming under my rock. Or coming out of my rock. <laughs> coming out of my rock, and I've been doing just fine. Um, the one other p- 
point I did not put on here that I thought I did is it's based on Emma by Jane Austen, which oh, go into the, go in depth with that because which, clearly you and Ketzel had a conversation of which I did not want to be a part of, which <laughs> which Antonio didn't even give a fuck. <laughs> he didn't even read it. I read certain parts. I was like, oh, I remember the Tempest. I like that movie. Um, yeah, I was because I was you and me have had a long conversation about the Tempest. Oh, I think it's amazing, and I love that they put. I love Helen the Tempest is like Prosper. one of my favorite. Love Actually, my only favorite Shakespeare <laughs> before the storm. thing. Shakespeare, Jane Austen, like um, a lot of movies in the nineties, late nineties, early two thousands were all based on like adaptations of those stories. Like we have this one, which Whoops. is based on Emma. I, for some reason, thought Emma was a Shakespeare, like that reference for Shakespeare. No, but you guys, we that was during the whole like. Yeah, this was a whole. That was the was whole, whole conversation. Slash conversation. Jane Austen, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so we got uh, Clueless on Emma, based on Emma. And then we have, um, what's the other one I said? Ten Things I Hate About You is based on Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. Um, and then the 12 people. Oh, um, is it She's the Man? There you is go. Is that the 12th night? She's the Man. She's the Man would be the 12th night? Yep. Is that the 12th night? For Shakespeare? Yeah. No, no. that's As You Like It. She's the man is the one where Amanda Mines plays a guy. Yeah, I think she plays one who would be a girl. Right. Well, I don't know how many. Okay, so I don't know how many gender fluid slash transgender slash cross dresser like works there are of Shakespeare. But as you like it is the all I, of them is, are n- women weren't allowed to be in well, place. I mean, but as like actual like part of the story. It's okay. the twelfth night. It's the 12th is night. it really the twelfth night? Wow, as you like it, it was what I would really think it is because that's a romance about um. Cross are we gonna go down a spiral of nineties uh movies? Are, we're all crappy, ni- not crappy, but like we're all campy 90s movies, just, you know, modernizations wait, wait. of Shakespeare. Was was that movie where like ugh, fucking not another teen movie, the whole like plot of that movie was. Well, that's a parody on all of the early all 2000s, the 90s. But like there 90s. was one big plot line. That was based off of with Freddie all Prince. That. There you go. Freddie Prince Jr. Who um, I'm in love with. Freddie, if you're listening to this. <laughs> Sarah Michelle Geller and I was you like, are my my uh, couple that I would love to <laughs> <laughs> to get to know better. Um, then there's also like um, West Side Story is based off of Romeo and Juliet. Well, that, that um, makes sense. Ketzel blew my my mind with uh, so obviously Lion King's based on Hamlet, which I think we all knew that. Yep. But Lion King Two is based on Romeo and Juliet, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> There you go. Oh, and it two. is. Two. I Lion King 2. I immediately went to one and a half. Not one and a half, but that's also based on like another Shakespeare That's thing. what I think I had read in that yeah. message when I was able yeah. to like, kind of like script through it. Actually, let me go. Let me go Clearly, Ketzel is the most uh, literature cultured person in our group. Um, for someone who can't read. So that, dude, that's for someone who's <laughs> a teacher. Who Sorry, can't Ketzel. read and yet somehow does teach. I'm, you know... You fake it until you make it. Um, yeah, because <laughs> you're like, you guys, stop, stop it! it. <laughs> it like, like, literally, they were like back 41 and forth. messages in, and I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna ever look at any of this. I had to mute my messages because I just couldn't take it anymore. There's a, there's a tweet or like some sort of screenshot where someone was like, if I ever need a vibrate, I'm just gonna put my phone in silent and use this fucking group message as a, uh, a vibrator. Um, but yeah, and sometimes Whoa. I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, just a little buzz. I don't know. I like, uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Shakespeare, but I love Jane Austen. And okay, I, I don't know anything about literature. Emma though, so I wish you could explain it to me, but don't because Antonio might take from that. So let's no, but I will I say once the, once we're done watching this movie, I recommend you both watch the new Emma that came out with Anya Taylor Joy. So good. I'll watch Emma. Lastly, on why did we pick this fashion, Mama? Fashion, fashion. very it's nice. Looking good, feeling fine. Looking let let good, me let me tell fine. you, Antonio. Like you're gonna go through this movie, and I want you to tell me which outfits you didn't like because all of them iconic. Mmm, mm. delicious. <laughs> I would eat it for breakfast. So scrummy. So scrummy. Okay. So, Antonio, what do you know about this movie? Let's dive Nothing. into that. I think I know maybe like one scene. 
Because I honestly, between Heather's and this, yeah, because like, you kept saying Heather's, right. and I was like, I was like no, no man. baby, it's not Heather's. <laughs> I was like, Heller, I Heather's please. is more violent. I, yes, I, yes, yes. I think the only thing I might know about this, aside from Yellow Plaid, which one of you referenced, and I was like, okay, so it's that one, <laughs> is uh, she has like not even like futuristic, but like some sort of futuristic technology that chooses her outfit for, her, and that's about yeah, it. yeah. I Beginning love and end that. of this, uh, that's it. Okay. I honestly thought there was murder in this movie, but that I'm not even me... convinced that that happens in this movie right now. And you don't know anything about Emma, so you don't nope. know anything? Okay. I know nothing about nothing okay. about this. I want to know the parallels to Emma, but you know, really, that just took me to, like, my Polly Pocket, like, okay. <laughs> I used to love Polly Pockets, okay? And then it, one of my little toys came with a DVD, and it was really cute. It came with, like, I don't know, three episodes of something. And then Polly Pocket also had a computer that chose her clothes for her. And it was so cute. I got to find the clip for you guys. I'll send it to you guys later. Anyway, that's all you really know, truly. So, honestly, truly, that's cool. I think so. I think so. Any of any of her friends? Do you even know she has friends? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. I barely know this uh, cast list, which I kind of accidentally like. Okay, no, I mean you're gonna find out soon. So like. But uh, okay, so that's all I know. Um, let's go over these scores though. Right. So Rotten Tomatoes uh scored Clueless as an eighty one percent. The audience score was 76% and Google score was 89%. That's Can I say, though, thing. it's like kind of crazy to me that the audience score is a little bit lower because everyone loved this movie. Yeah, I find that <laughs> so a, little a little more shocking. savage than, you know, yeah. what its cult following tells me. Like, I would say the Google score is pretty accurate. I would say the Google score to is how pretty beloved accurate. this movie is. Yeah, I love it. I It's one... It's not one of my favorite movies, but it's one I enjoy watching. Like, if it's on, I'll sit down and watch it. I just love it. Or if I want something to watch, it. I'll put it on. It's so good. But yeah, that's that's what the score is telling us. Seems like a solid B. I mean, most cult movies are. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I would say so. so. Solid B for sure. Um, So the list of actors that we have here are Alicia Silverstone, the lead, Paul Rudd, Brittany Murphy, Stacey Dash, Donald Faison, and Brecken Meyer. Do you know any of those people? Paul Rudd, obviously. Alicia Silverstone, maybe a little bit, but not super. I think you'll know her. You'll face. recognize like, her face. She's one of those faces from the '90s, 2000s, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll know her. When um, her. Brittany Murphy sounds like I should, but maybe I'm just like confusing her with Brittany Snow. Um, do you ever see Uptown Girls? And also Eight Mile. And no. No. Neither Damn, you would. I think. I don't know if you would like Uptown Girls, but it's it a little sad. <laughs> I feel like it's a little sad. It's sad, but it's good. Girls. Yeah. Um, Stacy Dash, I think, is that redhead, right? No, she's the her best friend or the black Dion. friend, right? Yeah. D. Okay, Dion. Um, she's not a great person now. She's yeah. like hardcore Republican, <laughs> but like in this movie though, she's great in this movie, but very unfortunate how that turned out. You know what happens sometimes. Um, Donald, I, know Donald. 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 I was like, you do. I know Scrubs. you watch Scrubs. I know, I know Donald face on. And uh, and honestly, outside of Scrubs, don't think I like him. Because he's only a one-trick pony? No, I just didn't like what I saw him in afterwards. I feel like the first thing I saw him afterwards was this uh, tiny, high-budget, low-substance sci-fi movie called Skyline. And he was not of a... Course, <laughs> of course you would know that. <laughs> After Scrubs, that was the only thing I can think of that he was in. I th- I just can't think of anything I just know else. Him from oh, Scrubs you're, you're like Donald Faison, right? Yeah. From Scrubs. Period. Yeah. Not any other movie. Or not this. I only know... <laughs> Not even this, oh, Donald, I don't mean to, lo- <laughs> we don't mean to clock you, but here we are. Um, And Brecken Meyer, who was like, I think besties with Seth Green, so. He's, uh, he was in, <laughs> he was in Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> he was John. Oh, no. <laughs> I never saw Garfield. You never saw Gar- Garfield with fucking, The real um, action, like, what is it, Bill Murray? Bill Murray was Garfield. Y'all were clowning on me for that. You said, you haven't seen Garfield also at that time. Did I really? Did you really? I feel like you did. When was this? I was listening to a bunch of episodes. It could have oh. been any time when oh. recent. It was recently though. It was probably Garfield? Charlie's Angels because we're he's <laughs> Bill Murray's in that. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like of Garfield <laughs> fame. <laughs> that could be wrong. Maybe I'm conflating that with Ketzel. I, uh, that sounds like something Ketzel would say. <laughs> it was probably. It I was mean, probably I actually am not a big like Garfield fan. I love Garfield. So you don't like Dude, I basically am. And you love Mondays. I basically am Garfield. I hate Mondays, but I love <laughs> lasagna. I love your chicken lasagna. I haven't which made that thing in so fucking long. I haven't, I haven't made it in over a year. A Since year and four months. Eep. 
Okay, okay. Okay, so that's all that you know. That's wild. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, like, you're pretty fresh, brand new, coming into this without any thoughts and feelings. Uh, other than us telling you that this is one of the cult classics of the 90s. I mean, I hope you're looking forward to it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Convincing. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Then I guess okay. we're going to watch this. We're going to watch this with Frank, who's going to say things in between, I'm sure. Hi, hey, Frank. Hi, Frank. From over there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Frank as our, our uh, peanut gallery. Hi. <laughs> I hope that catches. Well, I kind of want to listen to the other just to make sure. Ooh, we will. Anyway. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Au revoir. See you on the other side. Hello from the oh, I'll start that on the other side. <laughs> Hello from the other side. Hello from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. We're from back. the other we're side. <laughs> Bro. Wow. That movie was just a fucking lot. It was a fucking lot. So, what what's your immediate reactions? Stop, step, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm going to think. Stop. Like, honestly, I have a lot of thoughts, but, like, they're all painted over this big old fucking backdrop of, no, step, bro, stop. Oh, my God. Stop that right now. <laughs> I really can't. Okay, okay. All right, so literal immediate reaction. So, okay, okay, okay. So, we go through the movie. How <laughs> how about that? Is that all you want to preface us with? Yeah. I think all right, so. let's get into I it. So. <laughs> okay. I mean, the rest I'll delve into as we go, but uh, right. stop. It's very... Step, uh, <laughs> very vague on my summary so whenever That's you want to say something just, just slip I'll it in I'll there jump, i'll jump sar uh we begin with meeting Cher, who's a wealthy popular high school student living in beverly hills what, what? that's where i wanna be uh, we meet her dad who's a litigator the Dion. worst kind of lawyer dion who's her bestie we meet Murray, who's Dion's boyfriend, and we also meet Josh, who is Cher's ex stepbrother. And we Stop say step ex bro. <laughs> <laughs> And we say ex stepbro because like, okay, it's her stepbrother. However, father has divorced mother, meaning he's ex stepbro. Which Stop I feel like it's a little too <laughs> I think it's a little too sexy even still. Well, still so too like, close. It's still it's too close. Still guys? Too close. A, little, a little close. I don't know. I feel like they're Well yeah, because her her dad said you divorce wives not, wives children. not children and i Which was like so i was like that is very nice yeah. I, I like that that's admirable because he is still wanting to be involved he's like yeah. just because i divorced your mom doesn't mean i'm divorcing you yeah i can think of a couple not a couple of people but like i feel like i've met a couple of people who have that relationship with you know with their parents with their ex step parents that's um, nice not me but i can think <laughs> of maybe a couple of people mm -hmm. i mean yeah that's a that's a, that's nice. It's, a it's thing. admirable. And you know, yeah, that's how you can tell that those people are like good people. Yeah, yeah. Like dad is a hard ass, like in the movie as we'll see, but dad is also like you know a reasonable man. He's a fucking lawyer. Yeah. How can we get any further than that? Yeah. He's like a reasonable lawyer, but yeah. So, um, let's let's be clear that <laughs> that Josh is Paul Rudd when we say Josh. So just 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 remember so no if we paul say rudd. paul rudd it's josh we're talking about josh paul rudd which honestly same guy. how bizarre he doesn't look like a josh at all like, he don't like but did he not play all. step bro so good as as un dolly un was just like uninterested <laughs> honestly i'm like not hey, hey hey not step bro but paul rudd is a person stop paul rudd <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I, I'm so sorry. That's just honestly any interaction they had during the movie, I was just like, no. <laughs> no. There's, stop. This is where it's heading. Just stop. Okay. I, as someone who had <laughs> not seen this movie whatsoever before, yeah. This anyway, is a step -sest film. <laughs> this is how it starts. I guess that's how we'll preface this movie. Okay. So Cher plays matchmaker to two of her strict teachers after receiving a bad grade and, you know, believing 
that being in a happy relationship will soften their uh their grading on student standards that way that she can like you know sneak in and uh get them to change their grades so like basically she's just making them happy so that they like don't give a fuck about the students grades which actually works like Okay, let's not forget that Cher's dad is a lawyer, and she's just like, I object. I will not take that as a final answer. And I'm just like, what the fuck? But also, it works. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. You can bully your teachers. Or at least usually your parents will bully your teachers into... You know what? That's a good question. You know what? Kind of wish Q was in to weigh in on that. Have they ever been bullied into what raising a grade? Yeah, Ketzel, I would like to know that. But I feel like this is more high school standards. Yeah. That's true. You know, that's if, true. That's no, true. I feel elementary. Like high I mean, but there are those parents. You know there are those parents oh, yeah. that micromanage the shit out of their oh, little yeah. infants. Absolutely. I'm like, I really wish that I knew a parent that would, like, love to have their kid, like, negotiate their, their grades. Like, that should actually be a skill in high school. Negotiate your grades. Because then you know, that's how you, you get your people skills I mean, as a as a grown up. Because like after high school, you're like, oh gosh, oh geez, I don't know. Should I call the car insurance company and tell them that I want my own policy? Like you don't ever think of that in high yeah. school. But Cher, she's like, I fucking guess, and I'll get the best policy, mm-hmm. which is pretty badass. They fucking like fall in love. Like it's so crazy. So she loves these newfound good deeds, as she calls them. So she's uh that she's doing and so she decides to give back to the community and then just randomly a new student comes into into play and this new student while they're playing i think tennis right Mm -hmm. while they're playing tennis is uh is britney murphy britney murphy comes into play and she's the new student ty Mm -hmm. who is very uncool very just like kind of like trailer trash hood i don't know because i i was like very i was like this is gonna backfire real quick because one they were asking she was asking about like weed to start i think right truly and then she was like you guys have coke and i was like okay i think you mean coke the drink not Mm -hmm. coke the drug i i really think that she went that way but you got that yeah you got that i got the coke the drug was the question jesus and like uh what's my call Cher was like, yeah, it's a, it's a well-off school. We have Coke. <laughs> She's like, this is America. Of course we have Coke, but not the drug. Soda cans. Anyway, Ty is new. It's Brittany Murphy. She's like here to be remade as like the popular new cool kid, you know? So basically, um, Alicia Silverstone, Cher, takes uh, Brittany Murphy, who is Ty, under her wing and she turns her into a cool kid which is like very cool but also quintessential 90s movie right Mm -hmm. it's always a makeover 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 scene not another teen movie (laughs) well that's the parody (laughs) that's the parody um but yeah like she's all that yep 10 things i hate about you basically one too maybe Uh, not really story story have one a makeover it's oh. a Cinderella story. It's a Cinderella story. Cinderella stories are oh, always yeah, about Oh, yeah, for the, the, the ball. <laughs> for the, the, ball. the ball. The ball. Well, actually, before we go forward, can, you tell, me, can you tell me a little bit more about Emma, what the whole plot line of that story is? Now yeah. that we've seen the movie of Clueless, what is Emma about? Is Emma also it's about It's literally the same thing. Tell me. Tell Dude, me do you remember how in plot Persuasion, paint? she was going to fuck her cousin? <laughs> oh yeah what the fuck <laughs> like it that's just how it was back then they were like yeah, oh, okay okay yeah. but tell me about emma what about emma i want to know the whole plot line it's literally the same thing tell me in your words no please <laughs> you guys just watch the okay movie. okay okay so literally literally okay 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 tell me if i'm wrong so clueless is basically emma which is basically popular girl makes over like, unpopular slash wealthy. poor girl yeah and turns her into high society, which is the popular kids. And then someone wants to date her, but then she knows her value, but then she knows her value too much. And then Emma gets sad about it, slash share. And then she wants to do her stepbrother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't I think in um, I can't remember. I, I saw it a while ago, um, and I've never read. The only two jane austen books i've read is persuasion and i want to say sense and sensibility okay so i had never read emma but i don't think it's her step 
there. I think it's another cousin situation. Okay. But basically, (laughs) basically she makes over a girl who knows her worth and then she herself is trying to find love and she finds it in the most uncommon place, right? Which is in her own home, quote unquote. Yeah, because it's, um, what's his name? It's not Josh in the Shakespeare play. If there's a Josh in the Shakespeare play, I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to read it. I don't want to hear it. Josh sounds like the worst Shakespeare name ever. Knightley, Mr. Knightley, I think is the guy. That sounds sexy. Because we got well, that doobie sounds. What was it? Hot. In Persuasion, why can't I think of his name? Woodworth? No. Whitworth? Whitmore? Whitmore? Something with Whitmore? a W. Whitmore? And then we got Whitmore. Mr. Knightley, and then we got um, Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy. Stop Darcy that right Bingley. now! Ah! Uh, Mr. Bridget. That poor pathetic golden retriever. Mr. Bingley. Okay, what I could really he? get down with this over Pride and Prejudice. He's and just I'll tell a, you. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, tell me, tell me. And Emma, he's just a lifetime friend. Okay. A family friend? And he's 17 years older. Oh. Than Emma. Hmm. So he's not so just. So we're trading steps as for uh, grooming? Antonio! <laughs> Emma is 21. No. Oh. Hold on. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's 21. But they've known each other for a lifelong yeah. friendship. So still grooming? <laughs> Antonio. What? I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. I should read Emma. Gonna... Okay, okay. Bill Knightley's in it, too. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and so. And goth. Hmm. Oh, who's an ex? Hmm. You haven't seen it. No. Okay, and that's. Josh O'Connor, who is uh, in fucking The Crown. <laughs> Okay, so now we know, know the story of Emma, right? Okay, basically, like, parallel it's, to Clueless. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. I mean, that's that's okay. kind of hot. But mm-hmm. also, like, the where there's funny where it's the step bro. Yeah, there was an odd change. But I guess it would have been weird had it been the other thing, too. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it's... <laughs> I guess they're we're both at an terrible odds here. <laughs> Flip a coin. See which is worse. So... Okay, so they're turning a popular girl or an unpopular girl. Cool. Uh, with the help of Dion, they give Ty a makeover, which is so crazy because you know we love a good uh transition montage makeover. And pff, Brittany Murphy transforms, even though she kind of looks the same. She transforms. She's so cute. She changes clothes. Surprise! She's so cute. And also, did and we not color. did we not notice? Like, I think you one of you guys said like. Wow, I wish that hair color could just run off that easily. Actually, I think that is. That Frank. was Frank. <laughs> that was Frank right <laughs> here. <laughs> so Frank said that, and I was like, "Wow, so true, so true." Well, I think she had just like um, like a manic panic sort of color in it. I think it was like the kind of color that could wash out because it yeah. wasn't like because when they washed out her hair, it was still like a little red, but it was more like brown red. Right. It was a little more natural. But yeah, so with the help of Dion, they give Ty a makeover. Cher starts to steer Ty towards uh, the popular kid na- named Elton, which is very cool. Very, like, hip or whatever. And it's clear that there's more of an attraction between Cher and Elton than anything. And Travis, who is the skater boy in the movie, and this is also Brecken Meyer. Um, of Garfield fame? Of Garfield fame, excuse me. <laughs> he was a skater boy. My friend said, "See you later, boy." <laughs> and <Basically>. truly, <laughs> and truly, he did. He he skated out of there until later in the movie. But he's the, the slacker skater kid. You know, we see him in the in the film several times where he's like hanging out on the grassy knoll. He was like, "Thank you, thank you. I've had the most tardy in class so far." Of which I asked everybody if they have been tardy many times. Of which I learned that Antonio has been absent many times, <laughs> Me which too. is much much worse. That was that was our goal. To not Here's be the who the fuck cares about being there? Like if I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there on time. Here's the thing: me and Antonio are smart. We just you don't sure like are. to apply ourselves. <laughs> I hate. I, I would say that's an apply accurate. myself. I will do anything but. Yeah, hey, I'm hey, like hey. um, I could do other things for this podcast. <laughs> I'll do that for you. You just gotta show up. Oh, I apply myself to this podcast. I kind of do. I was doing some posts. <laughs> he's been doing. He's been applying he sure himself. Had, your story was amazing. <laughs> Literally, every story I'm like, how do you do this? How the fuck do you do that? <laughs> that gif was amazing. That was all Antonio. Let's be clear. 
it was amazing. Anyway, it's clear that also, Ty. Ooh. Sorry, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you went into it. I was gonna say something about your post about Lucy Liu being at go Comic-Con. off, go off, go off. She's gonna be in Shazam too. Yeah, I, know. <gasps> I was like Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu in my comic book movie. I haven't even <laughs> seen Shazam the first one. Oh, you should. It's cute. We should. I should. It was part of our secret Agent Brody night. Yep. Who the fuck is Agent Brody? <laughs> Adam Brody. Of. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian Brody's the. <laughs> Did you the, say Agent Brody when you meant Adam Brody? <laughs> oh, you fucked up. <laughs> I, did, I did fuck up. I did fuck up. Agent Brody. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Adam, hey, hey, hey. and Agent, Agent Brody. Agent it's Cooper. It's like the three, like the the maiden, maid, and or er, Madame. Madame. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know what you're talking maiden, about. Maiden, mother, crone. Agent. It's like the three. You normally like. Heckety. Agent Cooper, like, Agent Brody, <laughs> Agent, I don't know what. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I was going to say Romanoff? something that you were going to make me. <laughs> oh, no. Make say, it, say it. Say it. No. Say it. <laughs> no. Say it. A queen should support her king. <laughs> Eaton Hunt. <laughs> Agent Hunt. <laughs> I love Mission Impossible, okay? I won't let you fucking... Can I, I just, won't be can bullied. I, save, I won't be bullied. Oh my god, can there I just was save that. From I the, won't say it. Okay, can I just say that I like re-listened to like the first five to seven episodes of this podcast, and the amount of times that we just bring in Eaton Hunt for no reason. For no reason. Actually, only one reason. Like it's sitting Eaton next Hunt to me, <laughs> and Tom Cruise is literally the <laughs> same person. The amount of times that we bring him up in conversation is incredible. So Dude, I've been clearly. trying to go Detestable, see. Detestable? You mean? <laughs> that's a fantastic way of saying dude i've been trying to go see top gun too mm-hmm. <laughs> he's delicious in that movie who tom Cruise. okay i was like who because i don't like fucking look, miles look, look, teller look, look, look. i he's like miles teller's in no he ain't and he's... that's it and that's it i, I don't like i don't like the smell I don't of like them. Like them i don't like them. i don't like the I don't look, look, look of them <laughs> Okay, enough of that. I don't okay. know where we were on the. M- okay, 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 okay. I, we're, we're, talking about we're, Elton. Talking, <laughs> we're talking about Elton. We're talking about Elton. We're talking about Elton and Travis and like how Brittany Murphy's character is like into Elton and Travis, but she's really more into Travis. But Cher's pushing him towards Elton. Anyway, later on at a party, Elton ends up with no interest in Ty, but he does have interest in Cher, who turns him down while taking her home. And it was really funny. They were going back and forth. It's like. Well, if you take this freeway, it'll be perfect. And then he's like, actually, I'll be making a Yui, basically. So it'll be perfect if I take you home. And that whole thing happened. Anyway, Ty, or sorry. LA Cher, traffic. Guys. I know. It's like, it's too much. I'm like, As whatever like, fucking who cares? freeways. Everybody Keep gets home in, in 30 minutes in Las Vegas or less. So, like, it's pizza. It's pizza rules, pizza delivery rules. Um. Anyway, Cher does go with Elton, and uh, she turns him down while taking her home, and he ends up leaving her like a fucking asshole, like so awful. Next to the liquor store. At a at a parking lot, in for a liquor store. It's awful. There's a clown there. Neon I mean, sign clown. That's I mean, bad news. To be fair, he did tell her get back in the car. Yeah, but he immediately he's like get back in the car, get back in the car. Okay, bye. That's fucked up. I don't know. There's only so much patience a person can have with another human being, especially he one that. Uh, but getting back in that car would have been not great either. He knows that. So she's it's a rich just girl. like, mm, I don't know what the correct. Uh, I mean, I feel like, like the he was most upset that she turned him down. Yeah, that's also he was like upset. he wanted to get yeah, his but dick wet. Like, that's it. He did want to get his dick wet, but she got out of the car and he was like, "Don't do this." And she's like, "Stop Fuck walking. You. Just get back in the car." And she's like, "Go away." But reality is, is like, well, can you at least call someone and I wait while you get into a, someone else's car? Truly, truly. But that's a really well like thought out plan, and I don't think high school kids have that many thoughts. Especially you're right in the nineties. Rich high school kids in the nineties. Would you guys have gotten back in the car? Would you have waited? What would you have done? I would have gotten back in the car just because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to try to figure out how to. You're get like, ugh, fine. Yeah, well, I definitely would have. I did. wouldn't have. Me, I would have been like, yeah. So. I would have been like, fuck you. But at that point, at that point, me and Sky, who would have said, uh, no, I'm not going to get back in the car. We would have, we would have, would have, uh, would have gotten robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> we would have gotten robbed at gunpoint, which is very sad, honestly. And it wasn't really like a terrible, terrible robbery. But at the same time, it's like, if you're a rich yeah, kid, uh, 
in a parking lot in the middle of I don't even know where and you don't have a phone, like, it's fucking scary. The guy's just like, give me your stuff, get on the floor, count to 100. And you know what Cher does? She counts to 100 because she's actually a good gal. Despite her terrible, terrible choices, she's a good gal. I think she means well. She does. And I feel really sad for her at this point, honestly. But... Who does she call to her rescue, Antonio? Oh. Not Step Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who does she call? She calls Josh. Josh comes and picks her up and takes her home. Is there some tension? Some romantic sparks? Mm-hmm. I would say yes, but also <laughs> but his also, like, gal pal that's in the car she totally ruined it. Yep. Yeah, totally. total boner killer. Actually, just as a person, probably a boner killer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's, if I had that's a boner, how, that how it'd be. Kill it. That how it be sometimes mm-hmm. with movies and people. Anyway, it's it's there. You know that she is interested. You can see it. You can see it. Can you? Because she doesn't admit it until later. Surely she doesn't even know until later. Anyway, spoilers. When she's like, why is this making me mad? <laughs> no, <laughs> why myself. am I so angry? <laughs> but yeah, so anyway... Just in the midst of this, a new student named Christian, uh, Christian shows up and he totally gets Cher's attention. And she's like totally bugging because she's like, who is this? And it's really interesting because he's like into art and fashion and like, we also love art and fashion. But you know what that says about us? That we're queer? That we're just a little... And, like, yeah, so Christian kind of, like, flips her world upside down. Like, she's, like, you're going to be my b- new boyfriend because, like, you're so amazing into art and fashion. And it's so crazy cool. And she tries to seduce him. And, you know, on the regular, shares, you know, what is it? I don't know. Her seductions, her allure would work on every other man. But not Christian. But not Christian. So... She invites him over to his her house, and I don't know. At the same time, Josh is like a little bit jealous because he's like, "What's happening? There's a man's coming to my house." Because they have a date, right? She wants Christian to come over. They go to the pool, and she's like, "Do you want to go for a swim?" And he's like, "Let's watch a movie." So they watch a movie. She's playing footsies, and he's just like, "Let's just watch the movie." And I'm just like, "That's a little." Because he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah, and he brought over two movies, Spartacus and... Uh, Some Like It Hot. Hot. Which both have ter- Tony Curtis in it, who was, like, in, like, old Hollywood. He was very, like, sought after romantically. He married Vivian Lee, who the parents of Jamie Lee Curtis. He was very into that. And, like... Wanted to watch that because of him, but obviously Cher's trying to do all this, like, flirty stuff with him, which he's just like, I'm actually tired. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Right, right, right. I'm just Because I think tired. he's realizing at that point, like, oh, you're into me. Yeah. And honestly, my gaydar, my gaydar wouldn't have gone off. Not until just probably. start. Probably at the it point wasn't where until he was a couple like, of moments. Mm, let's watch the movie. I'd be like. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Did you feel that? Did you feel that since you were brand new to this movie? I, at some point, I was like, he looks like he's looking for a beard. Yeah, you did say that. You that's why did I was say like, that. Interesting. And I was like, why is he like kind of like? Mm. <laughs> why doesn't he why like he share sucks? as much as he should? I don't even know what made me say that. I don't know. I was only half paying attention. Around I think it's when they were at the the, the frat party. party where was it a frat party? Like the warehouse playing. party? Yeah, we yeah. can flash back to there because like they show up in order to get Ty to get the interest of Elton. Cher took Ty to a Christmas party. No, 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 no. I'm talking no. about the frat party they went. The frat to party is after Christian's Christian. introduction. It's when they're in the warehouse. And oh, the, the band's where? Playing. Mm-hmm. I think it's like a warehouse. We're talking about the, the warehouse party the with the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The ska that, party. Yeah, and then that's where Ty is also there, and Josh ends up coming. 
So that's where he got a little jealous and he was like, I should go to the party, right? And the dad's like, Yeah, you should go to the party. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna go to the party. I'm gonna go to the party. <laughs> Oh my god! You know, Stop, I would have been. Right. I would have been Christian at that point. I would have been like, "Oh, y'all want to go home? I can keep dancing. I'm gonna keep dancing. Bye." Bye. Is this where I kind of checked out? Um, Maybe. most assuredly. <laughs> oh, did you check out? At some point, I was like, "I'm bored." <laughs> Damn, it's just well, too much. It wasn't until like the end that I was like, "This is more my like speed." Hmm. But let's let's flash forward a little bit. So we know Christian status, right? We know Christian status. Uh, Ty's getting a little bit popular. It's kind of crazy. Well, the well only that's reason- the part where I checked back in. Um, so right after um, Murphy, Murray, Murray, Donald Faison's Murray, character yes. is Murray. Um, Murray comes out and says, Christian's a cake boy. He's into guys. Oh, but this isn't the driving scene. This is the driving scene immediately post, you know, um, seduction. Um, he's like, he's gay. And she's like, oh, my gosh, you're so right. And so she's like, oh, that's okay. He's a great shopper. We'll go shopping. And while they're in the mall, where is it, Westview Mall? That's we, West, Pavilion? To- West Pavilion? Mall. West Pavilion Mall. West Pavilion Mall is what... I, I went there before. Ah. <laughs> I've gone there several times. So my favorite malls in uh in Los Angeles. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. I could not afford it, but I'd like to go there sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> so they're at West Pavilion Mall, Sharon Christian, just chillaxing. And he's like, Is this James Dean or James Priestley? Priestley. And I didn't Jason guess that. Priestley. Jason, Jason Priestley. Jason Priestley, which is uh that. what is that, nine oh two one oh. Right? <gasps> Am I wrong? I don't know. That sounds right. I could be I wrong. I feel like it's not. Like, he's one of them. Um, but James Dean. And personally, I think that the jacket was kind of James Dean more than Jason. A little yeah. bit more James Dean. Yeah. So, um, but they see Ty, and she's get basically getting uh, bullied by two random guys, and, like, they're joking, and they, like, have her hanging off of a she's ledge. She's like, tee-hee-hee, would you guys catch me if I fell? And they're like, I don't know. Let's find out. And she's like, oh, gosh, oh, jeez, oh, gosh, oh, jeez. <laughs> And Christian comes to her uh, rescue, and then Ty becomes all popular. Cut to the next day, you know, you reap what you sow. Truly. Yeah, because Cher's like, if, well, no, that's like later after. So, But anyway, Cher takes a driving test, the big driving test. Yes. Um, and ends up failing and is unable to change the result, which depresses her further. Um, She comes home, and Ty's already there, like playing what was it hacky sack with josh some sort of i don't know not, i think it was hacky sack, <laughs> it was i'm hacky sure sack. and she was in a cute little outfit she was in a plaid little something which i think is mirroring like the share the beginning of yeah. the movie so like she was wearing her little knee-high uh sheer stockings she's wearing these little mary janes with a heel and she's wearing like a cute little blazer that's like crop toppy it's like purple plaid and then the same matching skirt same material Matching mini skirt, very very cute, very very a la share. Mm-hmm. Super cute costumes everywhere. Oh my god, we'll get to that. Eventually. Um, we'll get to that. But yeah, the ties there, um, and confesses her feelings for Josh, and wants shares help in pursuing him. And shares just kind of like, mm, hold on, about that. I don't know about that. And she tells Ty that they're not right for each other, which upsets Ty. And Ty says, "What does she say?" She says, oh, you, oh, I can't even do it right now. (laughs) You're just a virgin who can't drive. I love him right now. (laughs) He did it. He did it, guys. You were paying attention. I can't act. (laughs) I can't can't act. (laughs) You're just a virgin. (laughs) But isn't that so fucked up? It's so messed up. She got turned into the popular girl by Mm -hmm. Cher. This is very Mean Girls-esque. And she do this to her? But yeah, it is. Isn't Mean Girls based off of a Shakespeare something? I don't think so. It's out based off of like an actual book. Oh, it's okay. like Queen Bees and something else. Gotcha. It's like an actual like book. It's based okay. off of Gossip Girl. You know you love me. <laughs> XOXO. XO. 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 Regina. <laughs> God, I miss Gossip Girl. It's I miss watching so that. so good. <laughs> Every goddamn day. You but she's... No. No. 
It don't hit yeah, the same. No. It don't no, hit, not this it don't hit right. If Blake Lively. Yeah, like I was like, oh, it don't hey, got Dan, Dan Humphreys. If if <laughs> Blake Lively and Penn Badgley are not in it, I don't, I don't want, want it. it. I don't want it. They should have been in it. They should have been about. They should have absolutely been in it. Anyway, anyway, I can't believe she says that. That's such a bitchy thing to say. You're just a virgin who can't drive, and it's like you knew I just did. I didn't just pass my driver's license. Says you, bitch. Fuck you. That's when you grab the knife. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, she, then it turns into Heather's. <laughs> she done already done That's had her passions. So, so um, feeling totally clueless. <gasps> Cher kind of reevaluates everything that's like going on, and like she realizes she's in love with Josh. I love that moment <laughs> because it's so disgusting and disturbing. Like she's just like, why Not am I just step, so bro. angry? Shut up. She's like, why am I just so angry? And then like literally, she's just like walking across the town. She walks through her house. She walks fucking down Rodeo Drive, and then she's walking through this fucking fountain, and it fucking splashes like crazy. She's like, revelation moment. And we love those in movies, but also, this is about her step, bro. Not my step, bro. <laughs> Paul Rudd, stop. <laughs> not Paul Rudd. I think I'm in love with him. Oh, no. You were in love with him, though. I I love Paul Rudd. I think he's so funny. I think he's adorable. <laughs> yeah, he's just so... What an adorable little dad just character. What'd you say? Huh? Maybe when he's not your step <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe when he is I mean, your step Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is after podcast feelings. <laughs> Listen to the end to find out. Anyway. Anyway, um, she realizes that, um, starts campaigning for the school's Piz- Pismo? Is Basically, it? Pismo, yes, Beach, Pismo, Pismo, Pismo Beach, Disaster Beach Disaster Relief. Disaster Relief. Or something like that. In like, order to truly get back to the community. I think that she's trying to distract herself from her horniness. Yeah. And then she ends up making up with Ty as well. Which is so cute. I'm glad that they become friends again. And then Ty ends up dating Travis, which was meant to be all along. Truly. She's like, you want to smoke this? And he's like, yeah. Y- yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> her and Josh uh, confess their feelings for each other. Okay, okay. So what ha- happened was that like this, they were doing like depositions, right? Dad's a lawyer. Let's not forget that. Dad's a lawyer. And then there's this other lawyer guy in the room. Paul Rudd and and Cher. I'm going to say Paul Rudd. What's his fucking name? Josh. <laughs> what's Step his, bro? What's his fucking guy's name? It's called Step Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Cher and Josh and this other lawyer guy are like filling out depots. And then he's like, what? You filled it out wrong? How could you? That puts us a day back. And then she's like, oh, sorry. And it really is so cute the way that she's like, sorry. But it's like, well, that's not... Her dad told her to do that date. Like it, he did, he did. Yeah. And then he's like, "That's so, that's so crazy and so stupid." And then he's like bad mouthing her. And then fucking Josh is just like, "Hey, you Shut can't say out. that to her. She's like, she's just a fucking kid, dude. Leave her the fuck alone. Like, it's not her bad. That's your bad." And he's just like, "Yeah, if you guys weren't playing footsies all night, you wouldn't care." And then he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" whoa. And then he's like, "Yeah." Uh, clear your eyes. I'm leaving. And anyway, I'm calling out. <laughs> I'm calling in sick. I'm not gonna be here for this. He leaves. He leaves, and then he turns around. Josh in the foyer, and he looks up at the stairs. The I love the like two like the staircase staircase landing, two separate stairs up, and then shares at the at the landing, and then she's like, "Did I mess up?" And he's like, "Nah, you didn't do that." He's just bitching. And then so they sit next to each other, and it's so cute. He's just bugging. Yes, he's just bugging. And it's so cute. It's just so cute because, like, okay, okay. Okay, he looks at her, <laughs> and she looks at him, and he looks at her, and she looks at him. He's just like, he <laughs> looks at her, <laughs> and she looks at him. <laughs> but, like, they look at each other, and then he's like, it's okay. And she's like, I just feel like I've been fucking up a lot. And it's like, I, I wish that I could be better. It's like, I'm a pretty girl, right? And then he's like, mm. And <laughs> I love that. That's probably one of the most also quotable things about this movie is when it's like, I'm a beautiful girl, right? And then he's like, mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Negging. Very in vogue. Heard that before. <gasps> <gasps> you did not. <laughs> Frank! 
Yeah, it wasn't that. Okay. It was along the, it was, I got the same eh, response, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but also you're like, I'm horny. <laughs> Anyway, no, I was very taken so aback by that response. So, for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look that up. Negging? You gotta look it up. You don't inherently know that. Is that psychologically like mean, damaging? Is that like mean when you literally put someone down in order to like I don't know, flirt with them? Only in the bedroom. Well, well that's a humiliation. I was say, that doesn't humi- work for me at all. <laughs> actually, Frank, that doesn't work for me at all. Put your Crocs in sport mode and run. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Paul Rudd does not. Josh does not put his Crocs in sport mode and run. He was just like, eh. But he's like, you are a beautiful, gorgeous, amazing girl. You know it already. And she's like, really? Really? You are a beautiful, amazing, gorgeous girl. You know that, right? And then they key. Oh, I thought you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm all- thank, thank you, Dolly. At least some- someone <laughs> thinks Frank, so. Frank, hey, Dolly. You know Dolly. Dolly. Yeah, oh, shut up. Shut up. Frank, you know what's context. never off the table with Sky, right? This was, that was totally out of context. You know it's never so off the table with Sky, funny. right? You, I, could, you there fuck was like up. the Tyndall effect of like her like gaze into your eyes as she <laughs> was like, do you really just, like, think so? <laughs> just like a little. Was like, Josh, I should have just kept recording. <laughs> Dolly, Dolly, do you think I'm special? You were the most specialist girl in my life. <laughs> did you Did you hear that? Did you hear that though? Did you hear it though? You heard it though, right? Anyway, continue. you're the most special, beautifulest girl of my life. At least someone thinks so. <laughs> it's never off the table, Frank. <laughs> never. <laughs> so far out of context. Anyway, they I kiss. Really <laughs> <laughs> girl, get it. All right, guys, that was the end of the episode. Thing. <laughs> this is sit down loser. We're watching a movie. Th- Catch you next Catch time. Catch you next time. <laughs> but hey. Bringing it back, <laughs> they kiss. Okay, Antonio, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, it's basically <laughs> the most depornified porno you've ever fucking seen. Are you sure you don't want to record it? <laughs> I can't. Kiss. There's no space. When they kiss, <laughs> eat it. Me and Dolly were like, "Ding, Dolly, <laughs> 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 look at you." And I was like, <laughs> "You're and like, we're just like, oh, we're not visually recording, but you had such a stink face." <laughs> You're like, you're just like, hmm. <laughs> I know there's siblings, but not in the blood. Was it too straight for you? Was it too heterosexual? 100%. <laughs> Antonio. That's my favorite catchphrase. Antonio. You do say Antonio. that a lot. Antonio. Get that on a t shirt. How do you even, like, Stella, print that? Antonio print that. with a bunch of O's. Nice. Cute. In nice, 70s nice, 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 nice. retro. That would Maybe be like that comic book. But like Barbie like font. Powwow? <gasps> yeah. I gotta make that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Graphic design is that one's passion. It is my passion. Make that. Put it on a t-shirt <laughs> right now. Anyway, they kiss. And uh, it's it's cute. But then we're like, mm, there's step siblings. No, step bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I wish that this episode could be named Cueless, but really it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you keep saying? Oh, uh, no. No, Step Bro or Step Bro No? I don't know. It's, it's, it's like one been a the... million different fucking variations. But it shouldn't, that shouldn't be that. That, that no. was option two. That <laughs> was, has to be. That was option Q-less. two. That was option two. Let's be clear. <laughs> Ketzel, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know you're not editing this and I am, but oh my god. This movie is low-key problematic. <laughs> <gasps> That's all it take. I don't think it's it problematic. Is... Stepsest. Uh well actually no maybe not that, but like the Emma thing was like, oh that's kind of grooming. That what? Is grooming, uh, well, that's not this I mean, that's, that's not, not this version. Actual. But yeah, and then the movie ends with a wedding between the two teachers. That share set up in the beginning. I know Which it was so like was misleading, so right? Right. I kept thinking that was gonna blow up in her face. The the step sibling kiss? No no no. no. 
No, that could potentially still blow up. They kind of just do a hard cut and don't like pan to seeing what dad thinks or anything like that. But like getting the teachers together, you know, I half expect like something to happen between the teachers and they unravel or explode on each other. And well, guess whose fault that was? Oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's very like teen movies ass. Like, but this is a happy ending. It is a uh, happy ending. It's cute. So and like that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're misled into thinking that like Cher and Josh have a wedding, but that's totally not true because she's fucking in high school and that's disgusting. So the teachers get married and then they're there and we're like, what? And then they kiss again, Josh and Cher. And then the movie ends. And then we're kind of just like because they continue a relationship, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. A step siblings. I got that same notification. (laughs) I know you did too, right? (laughs) It's our Apple Watches. Um, yeah, that's how it ends. Antonio, was it worth a watch? (laughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) I definitely think it's like right there in the roster of every something that most people should see. Okay, I ask you: Do you think it's worth like a cult following? Just having seen it. Can you see how it would be a cult following? A cult filing? Following? Filing? 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 Is it filed under cult worthy? Filing <laughs> under court following. <laughs> um, no. Really? I don't Why do you, why do you think not think so? so? It's just... Does it warrant a cult following? No. I don't think it does. Because of... I don't know. There's, there's not... Where's the oomph factor, I think? I don't know. I think it's quirky. I, I think it's just why. quirky. That's why it is. And everyone's just like, oh, I love being quirky. and the quirky fashion. Things. Like, I mean, we can talk about the fashion and we will. Um, but I don't know. Like, storyline is kind of like blah. blah. I mean, I'm surprised, like, you know, when audiences say, what is it, 79? Yeah. 70 something. 76, I think. 76? 76. 76. And Rotten Tomatoes is 81. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think it should be flipped? Yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe like anyone who's critical of it is just like, eh, it's interesting. It's, it's a movie. Okay, okay. I mean, do you as the follower feel like you missed out on not having the watched loser? it? Sorry, <laughs> the follower. I'm drunk. <laughs> you don't. Oh, you don't think you missed out? No. You you well, probably could have gone your whole life watch- not watching it. A little bit. Wow. I think so. But you're not mad you watched it. No, I'm not mad. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm not bargaining with you know the afterlife or <laughs> anyone no. i'm not i'm not banging on the devil's door being like hey <laughs> hey i can now hey, give me that back no, no 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 it's not bad bad you know but That's if anyone so is wild. like mm, let's watch clueless and it's like nah, i'm okay i'm gonna go yeah i don't know do something else i'm gonna go clean something <laughs> i don't know it's just interesting you know, i don't maybe at the time compared to like other movies sure it had okay. some factor maybe it was like maybe it was like a progenitor of teen movies and that's what it is. I think but that's what it it's is. It's probably one of the first teen movies, I and feel. And then like, I, really I maybe, if I really think teens. about that, mm. if I think about that, like, you know, there weren't a lot of teen movies like there are today. Yeah, this is well, 1995. Yeah. So it's like quintessential, like, 90s teen yeah, movie. Yeah, back when they just let anyone make movies for whatever reason sort of situation. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. Okay. But, like, then I would be like, yeah, I suppose, yeah, that's a really, that's a valid reason to have, like, a cult following for it. Um, but I guess it, it, Nowadays, it, it warrants it, one, but you don't think it does in the now time. No. Interesting. Okay. If I was a young teenager in 1995, then sure. You'd be like, oh my God, I love clues to death. Yeah. My fashion is based off of it. My attitude based off of it. It's like quintessential Valley girl too. Yeah. That too. All right. Cute. Interesting. Uh, hot cast, solid cast. Hot cast, solid cast across the board. Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah. 10 out of solid 10 cast. for me. 10 out of 10. I like them all. I like the dad. The dad was really funny. The dad was funny. Even though he was like a hard ass, you loved him. You're like, I wish you were my dad, litigator. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then you did see like glimpses of him like really caring for mm-hmm. sure too. Like that little like when they talk. There's a hardness and a softness to it. I like that. I feel like it was a really good... I don't know. A really good uh, movie look into what parentals could be. Mm-hmm. 
you know, that are actively, that are present, but also very involved with their job. Yeah. I like that a lot. So, soundtrack. Amazing. I love the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I forgot Fantastic. just the girls in it. Yeah. I was surprised to, I was to listen to those songs and think that they were, like, pre, like, 1995. Yeah. Pre-release. And I'm like, I like all these songs. Good. Were they, like, brand new back then? Probably. Yeah. yeah. And, like, I love the ending what? song, Tenderness. Which is an 80s song, but, like, they put it in this movie, and I thought that was very cute. September 21st, 1995. Just a girl. It might have been released specifically because of this movie. When was the release of this movie? July 19th, 1995. Oh. So it was released. It was released, like, for this movie? Mm -hmm. Those those songs happened. Maybe it was released as a single or, like... Oh, Part of an yeah, album maybe. after. Yeah. Maybe. That's so weird. That is crazy. That's cool. Hey, we don't know what life was like well, in the like, before times. Well, let's for think movies. of it like in this turn in these terms, like let it go. They released that before the movie came out, didn't they? I know they released cuz I remember They might have released like parts of it, but I don't know if No, they I don't think typically they the it soundtrack comes out before the movie, doesn't it? Not no. nowadays. Really? Because, like no. I remember the Frozen 2 soundtrack. I only was able to listen to Panic's cover of Into the Unknown and I listened to that shit a lot. I listened and to the And then the, the movie two. version came out after the movie came out. I right. Think the okay, same okay. I think I did with the same a couple thing. of other like soundtracks. Like soundtracks don't release until afterwards because yeah. they want you same to go Same with see like the the, the Elvis movie. I was like dying to listen to the Casey Musgrave version of Can't Help Falling in Love and it was not out until the movie had come out. Oh, that's fair. That's an interesting assumption. They'll, le- they'll release Movies? singles because yeah. they released Vegas as a yes, single. Yes, they would release right. a single by itself so that way you can charm up a little hype for the movie but the actual soundtrack might not come in. Clearly, later. you guys can date us at this time. <laughs> but yeah, that's so good. That's so interesting to note. It really hasn't changed since the 90s then. Soundtracks mm-hmm. come out after the movies. Interesting. Well, yeah, solid, solid soundtrack. Good sounds, good songs, for sure. How do you feel about the costume design and set design locations? Fantastic, fun costume design. That's just in general. And as far as sets go, I mean, it just looks like quintessential, like teenage California. LA. Yeah, yeah, totally. Beverly uh, Hills. I mean, hey, I asked you, Antonio, if you found an outfit that you didn't like in the movie. Like, no. I challenged you. Well, with I mean, that. aside from, okay, so then there was a, a, a string of outfits <gasps> all in one. That you didn't like? That I did not care for. Oh. Um, it was the Gen Z looking ones for the guy, for the guys. Oh, oh that was When she was like dragging guys. the boys, I was like, Jesus Christ, I feel like this is just what is. Like intentionally bad. Before it's time. No, like they were making fun of them actively. Like, yo, look at these. These, yeah, I know, but now but if you. But some people if, took it and ran with it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you go walk outside now and like go down the strip and just see how many Gen Z outfits that look like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's you know, it is no like uh, layering Y2K is very um, totally yes, yes, yes. Y two K is in right now. I'm Which telling I'm you, like, I mm-hmm. said before, like fashion cycles every twenty years. It does. So like what was hot in the 2000s and I'm I'm just saying if I could get my I don't hands know, it's 20 years anymore. I'm if I could get my hands on some juicy couture track suits velour track suits because I would wear them now the, and I wouldn't be mad the juicy couture track the velvet ones yes. yes what I would wear them what I would wear them are you pregnant no <laughs> I'm not a regular mom I'm a cool, I'm a cool mom, mom. L- but low rise jeans can stay in in, uh, in hell. <laughs> Don't ever come back. I oh hate you. God. Were we just listening? To <laughs> we that? were listening to that uh, episode. We were talking uh, Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Go we- to hell. <laughs> we fought and died for high waisted died for high waisted pants. <laughs> okay, so you can go to hell. Um, outfits amazing, incredible. Love the set design locations. I'm telling you, the Ooh. fucking creepy clown neon sign of that parking lot. It's like you couldn't get worse than that. You couldn't be more lost That's as like a Beverly being, Hills like, kid. That's like being stuck at like Circus Circus area. Dude, <laughs> as a Beverly Hills fucking kid, <laughs> remember when we got <laughs> stuck in... Remember when we busted your wheel and we got stuck at a parking lot by the Circus Circus? Yeah, it's like just <laughs> like that area. You can kind of get the vibe from that. That's funny. Isn't that like right next to the mint? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Is it? Oh, it was right terrifying. next to the mint because we were on the Sahara. Yeah. 
We didn't and know you, you then. Wait before he worked there. Yeah, I know, but it was like right there. No, man. It all but comes together. Scary. Circles. It completely frightening. Yeah. So uh, I but I will it. say this. Uh, one thing that I did love about this movie was the, uh, what is it? The Nash car. What was oh, the, oh, the Christian's vehicle. Car? Christian's car. Christian's car was this adorable fucking. The gay guy's cool car in f- orange and not in, black. It was like yellow, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like yeah, yellow. But like in black looks fucking cool. But like in, in orange, so not yeah, like. Thank yeah. you, Frank. Thank Frank, you, Frank, everybody. I wonder if we can hear you all the way over there. In the Nash the Metropolitan, he said, if it wasn't yeah. clear enough. Gorgeous. You know, I feel like Christian himself had a very um, old Hollywood, vibe. Yeah. old Hollywood uh, thing that he liked. He, like that was his little quirk, you know, James Dean, Jason Priestley, like that Tony comparison. Curtis, um, all of that, yeah. His like his rolled up sleeves, like, you know, his slacks. It was very of that era. Right. So I found that very charming of him. But like your queer is showing. Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando, I think, is where I was like thinking when he was wearing that black shirt tucked in. The tannish pants? Were they with the khaki? They were tan, with but the they khaki were, pants. They were like, and they were like had it tucked in with the belt. They were like, kind of khaki, maybe ding, olive. Ding, 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 ding. But he also had a darker Rainbow pair flags, when he came not to the red. house. Rainbow flags, not red. Love, love, love. Rainbow flags, not red. <laughs> <laughs> love, yeah. love, love. Um, anyway, that was great. Costume design, set design, spectacular. Really, really. And like favorite quotes of the movie, you guys have any? Do you remember any? The, uh, I think there are a couple, but the one that like made us all giggle was the Sammy. Davis yeah. <laughs> what you think? Since Sammy Davis died, there was an opening in the Rat Pack. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cool. Virgin Who Can't Drive, clearly iconic. Oh, uh, as, as if. if. And the whole monologue about the Haitians. Ew. Yeah, as if. Totally bugging. I'm totally bugging. It's too good. So quotable and amazing. Um, so I think we've already maybe did we answer this question already? Yeah. Antonio, we but did. let's do it formally. Antonio, as the loser of this episode, do you think this movie's worth all the hype it has received? And would you recommend it to other losers out there? I feel like this is a yes and no question. <laughs> it's a yes and no question. It's a yes and no answer like i'm okay i would have been fine without it i would have lived my whole life without seeing it i've been like i'm okay i've seen teen mo- teenage movies before but if you're for whatever reason trying to do research on like the very early teenage 2000s movies and stuff like that by all means you should definitely watch it it should be like the first thing you probably see but if you're just a rando trying to look for a movie to watch you can see i mean is there a teen movie you do like very much so. Yeah, that's a good question. Is it Cinderella story? Yeah. Well, Clueless ah! walked, so Cinderella story exactly. could run. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like I didn't need to see like not even I didn't she's need all to that. See I actually, I, it's been a long time since I've seen that. Um, I she's actually, all that. I've, I've she's I don't even know if I have seen it. I've There's just so many it. of them back in that time frame. That's I've why I've never I'm, like, seen it. Clueless but I have another, seen like, not another teen movie, and I can get the gist from that. Yeah, not another sure teen movie can, is is a sure parody can. movie. It's like freaking scary Jamie's movie. Jamie's got a. G- <laughs> it's clearly the caricature. <laughs> it's the caricature of the whole movie. Yeah. I'm sorry, Antonio. No, I know. I know because I've seen <laughs> what you call not another teen movie because there were all these teen movies. Yeah. So like right. the Prince in Me. Oh um, God, that's a terrible one. <laughs> right yeah. off the bat. Right off the bat, and there's just so many like teenage movies or like high school slash college movies because Prince in Me is not high school. Yeah. Uh, no, they're like are they in college? They're in college. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like um, that one. She's the man. One. She's the man. Ten she's things I hate about Ten you. Ten things I hate about you. I actually don't know what I have or haven't watched out of these. Interesting. And that's why I'm just like, Clues is just another, whatchamacallit, it's just another spot on the bingo card, you know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what part makes me laugh about a not, not another teen movie? Shut the fuck up. And every time I think about it, it makes me laugh is when she's painting the picture. <laughs> Yes, and he's yes, like, yes. who's that? And she's like, it's my mom. And he's like, <laughs> you have her eyes. <laughs> she, goes so, she goes so fucking hard painting this picture. And then we see this <laughs> fucking sick figure, figure with like stupid with movie. scary eyes. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's so funny. It's so good. <laughs> Chris Evans, your debut, I feel. <laughs> You're so 
so good and so hot in that movie. Anyway. <laughs> he plays Sorry, a terrible person movie. really well. <laughs> he does. <laughs> that's, what I don't I, I, that's why I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but him and Scott Pilgrim still, I'm like, those mm. eyebrows? Still a terrible person. Played really well. But that <laughs> <laughs> she has your eyes. <laughs> or you have her eyes. <laughs> oh, it's so And that concludes this episode of Sit Down Loser. We're watching a movie. We'll catch you guys next time. Ew. As if. Bye. <laughs> so how are we doing? We're just saying it? We're like us? Okay. Yep. So, okay. Like right now, for example, the Haitians need to come to America. But some people are all like, what about the strain on our resources? But it's like when I had this garden party for my father's birthday, right? I said RSVP because it's like a sit down dinner, but people came that like did not RSVP. So I was like totally bugging. I had to call ass to the kitchen, re- <laughs> redistribute the food, squish in extra place settings. And by the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. So like if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Haitians. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Thank you very much. (laughs) This is Dahlia recording for Share 1995 for Clueless. Okay. So, okay, like right now, for example, the Haitians need to come to America. But some people are all, what about the strain on our resources? But it's like when I had this garden party for my father's birthday, right? I said RSVP. It was a sit down dinner, but most people came like (laughs) most people that came like did not RSVP. So I was like totally bugging. I had to haul ass to the kitchen and redistribute food, squish in extra place settings. But by the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. And us. Okay, sorry. (laughs) And so if the government could just like go to the kitchen, rearrange some things and could certainly (laughs) we could certainly party with the Haitians. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Thank you very much. So, okay, like right now, for example, the Haitians need to come to America, but some people are all. What about the strain on our resources? But it's like when I had this garden party for my father's birthday, right? I said RSVP because it was a sit-down dinner. But people came that, like, did not RSVP. Sorry. That's okay. We all <laughs> So I was, like, totally bugging. I had to haul ass to the kitchen, redistribute the food, squish in extra place settings. But by the end of the day, it was, like, the more the merrier. And so if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things... We could certainly party with the Haitians. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Thank you very much. Why are you so cute? You're just so cute. Frank, do you want to do it too? Not really.